spent her life working with books and book people. She has no idea what else she what else, what else to say, and is very bad at writing in third person. Please introduce Susan Safey to the stage. Hey y'all. Um, so we're gonna do some terrible things to microphones up here. <laughs> um, and while that's happening, I'm going to introduce my talk. Hi y'all. I'm Suzanne. Let's try this one. Yes. No. All right. You know, what? I'm just gonna use this one actually. So that's gonna be for the next one. All right. So today I'm going to talk to you all about passion and why following your passion is a terrible lie. I went through my first quarter life crisis when I was 20. I had one every six months, like clockwork, until I was 27, give or take. It always sounded exactly the same. I'm wasting my life. I have no idea what to do. What am I going to do with my life? It was very dramatic and very boring, even for me. The problem was not actually that I had no idea what to do. The problem was I had too many ideas. I had too many directions to choose from. I enjoyed learning about everything. I was a jack of all trades and master of none. I'm an interdisciplinary studies major because my transcript is an unholy mess of about 12 different departments. And I still suck at trivia. While having these repeated existential crises, the only message I was hearing was, follow your passion, chase your dream. If you're not achieving your dream, then it's because you're not working hard enough. I was working overtime, just trying to figure out what my dream was. You can imagine my desperation for answers. I read book after book, signed up for seminars and webinars and workshops. Currently, I have almost a decade of research under my belt surrounding the idea of a life passion. Trust me when I say I know a lot about feeling stuck, about analysis paralysis, about multi-potentialities, and so much more. More than any of that, though, I want to talk to you tonight about hummingbirds and jackhammers. Elizabeth Gilbert, author of Eat, Pray, Love, and many other books, gave a talk for Oprah's Super Soul event in 2015. It changed my life. In her talk, Miss Gilbert explained that the world has jackhammers in it. People like her, who are driven, focused, have one career, one linear path. They spend their whole lives chasing just one dream. But most humans are not jackhammers. They are hummingbirds. They don't follow one overriding passion. They follow gentle curiosity, flitting from interest to interest, cross-pollinating wherever they go. Their careers are not linear, but zig and zag all over the map. Their lives are rarely linear either. Hearing Miss Gilbert talk was like watching the sun rise for the first time. I was a hummingbird, and so much of the advice I'd been hearing was for jackhammers. I kept reading books, but I also started asking questions of the people around me. It quickly became apparent that a linear career path is actually a myth. I invite you to do this for yourself. Go up to a lifelong learner, or a faculty member, or even one of the crew. Ask them what their life has looked like. I challenge you to find anyone who has worked in just one job or for just one employer their entire life. I'm going to actually quickly list some examples of people I've talked to on the ship. Kelly, lifelong learner, is finally using her journalism major for the first time at a magazine after several years in banking and as an SAHM. She is also a drummer. Steph, staff member, <laughs> Staff, staff member, is Peace Corps turned marriage counselor who currently works in the field office. And Radu, crew member, worked as a lab technician, a photojournalist, and a BJ before ending up an AV on the ship. Okay, so perhaps nobody with a normal career trajectory or school trajectory would end up on a study abroad program like this one. It is a little unusual. 
So maybe I need to look at successful people back on land. Elon Musk, engineer and entrepreneur and manages several companies and a philanthropist. Ironically, this also describes my jackhammer of a father, except he doesn't have a billion dollars or a Twitter feed. Beyonce, singer and actress and media maven and philanthropist. Okay, okay. Terry Crews, football player, actor, painter, activist. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. I see where this is going. Maybe I need to look outside the United States. China, Jack Ma, business magnate, politician, co-founder of Alibaba, and philanthropist. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> India, Shiv Nadar, an industrialist who transformed his company into a billion dollar enterprise by constantly reinventing his company's focus. Ooh, okay. Also a philanthropist. All right, here we go. South Africa, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, activist and philanthropist, and clergyman, and Nobel Peace Prize recipient, and author, and politician, and actor. Go figure. I don't have time to list all of the unsuccessful people who put all of their hopes and energy into one dream, only to see it die in a pile of debt and heartbreak. If you want those stories, ask me about it later, but trust me, it's common. Anyway, what lessons can we learn from this list of luminaries? Two stand out to me. Put good out into the world and follow your interests, all of them. And guess which lesson I'm going to focus on? You don't have to chase down all of your dreams at once. Some people pursue one and then another, like Rapunzel finding her new dream. Others integrate as many of their interests into one career as possible, like my friend, the adventure cartoonist who loves tall ships and graphic memoirs. Still others categorize their lives. Here's my job, here's my side hustle, here's my hobby. There's even a phrase for this, the slash career, actor slash director, CEO slash skateboarder, rabbi slash rapper. As we have experienced on this ship, the only constant in life is change. That includes inside you. You are going to grow and shift and want different things in life. Sorry, but it's true. Maybe right now you want a good time. Maybe in a decade you want a family. And maybe in 40 years you want a legacy. Jackhammers in the audience, this is true for you as well. I know you already know exactly what you want from life. You're driven and passionate about just one thing. And that's great. That's awesome, in fact. But I'm telling you, it is normal that your goals will shift over time. It's okay, I promise. But Suzanne, you ask, following my interests is all well and good, but how do I do that? It is both the easiest and hardest thing in the world. Take one step. Perform one small action that seems like a good idea. Don't analyze the idea too long, just do it, like Nike. <laughs> to butcher a quote from the author slash TV producer, Neil Gaiman, even if you're driving at night in a fog with only one headlight, if you drive slow, you can make it all the way home. Even if you only take one step at a time, feeling your way in the dark, you can craft a good life for yourself. Write a song, buy a cactus, Check out a book from the library on accounting. Just pick a direction and go. Guess what? It's probably the wrong direction. That's okay. Inertia is your enemy. Once you start moving, it's much easier to pivot. And then iterate, iterate, iterate. Try variations to get closer to what vibes with you. You didn't like writing that song? Cool, go try a freestyle poem. You love your cactus? Grow a peony. You think accounting is fascinating? More power to you. Go take a class. Before you know it, you'll be a playwright slash gardener slash accountant. I want to add a quick note about luck. If you take that step, if you put yourself out there, that's when the luck happens. 
that's when the right time, right place, networking opportunity magic happens. That's how I got on this ship and on this stage. I spent literally years pondering what to do and doing nothing. Once I finally took a step, and then another step, and then another step, suddenly I realized I didn't feel stuck in dread anymore. I was running towards whatever my life is about. I still don't know, but I'm a lot more okay with that than I used to be. I can look back and be proud of the things I've accomplished rather than regretting all of the things that I didn't do and all of the time that I wasted. After all, many, many steps later, this is where I find myself, preaching about passion. Ironically, passion and talking about passion is one of my passions now. Feel free to come talk to me about what you're obsessed with, what your goals are, how you're convinced you don't actually have any interest, which is almost never true, but whatever. Or just about the concept of fashion in general. Just remember, the world doesn't operate in a linear way. It's okay that your life won't either. Follow your curiosity, for it will lead to interest, then possibly passion. And maybe, if you're really lucky, a life purpose. Thank you.